Hello learners, this is Sangamitra Suryapani from National Institute of Open Schooling. Welcome to this program on biology lesson for class 12th. As you know, biology is the science of living organism and life. If you open your book, you will be happy to see the first lesson about how life began on earth and how the vast biodiversity came to be. Today we have with us Dr. Bharti Sarkar who is retired reader from Delhi University. Welcome ma'am to our studio. I would like to ask one question. How life originated on earth? It is now a very well known fact that earth came into existence way back 4.5 billion years ago as part of our solar system. And so the earth came into existence 4.5 billion years ago and life first originated 3.5 billion years ago. This picture on the monitor shows what the primitive atmosphere was like on earth. You can see here that everything is in the gaseous state. You can see hydrogen, you can see carbon dioxide, ammonia, methane, but absolutely no oxygen whatsoever. This is because it was very hot and the atmosphere was reducing. You can also see some lightning which was really the source of energy. Then what happened? The earth started cooling down and all the water vapor that was there in the primitive atmosphere condensed into water and there were torrential rains continuously it kept on raining and the first oceans were formed. It is in this oceans that the molecules of life first appeared. These molecules actually were washed down with water and came into the oceans. They came into combination, they combined to form certain molecules like amino acids, sugars, nitrogenous bases, nucleotides and that is why the theory for the origin of life is called the chemosynthetic theory of origin of life. But learners you know very well that in science unless there is evidence for a theory, no theory can be accepted. So people began to look for evidence and this evidence was found in the rocks which were 3.5 billion years ago. You will be happy to know that even in our country in Kudramukh in Karnataka when people were really mining they found large number of fossils of these bacteria and these bacteria were the first bacteria which appeared on earth and these were seen only under the microscope therefore they were called micro fossils but then if there is no experimentation then again we cannot take a theory to be true an experiment which was devised by Urey and Miller what they did was they took all the primitive gases or rather the gases found in the primitive atmosphere and they passed electricity, you can see the electrodes there and then they collected as fractions the products of combination of these chemical compounds. And lo and behold they were so happy to see that there were molecules which could give rise to the first molecules of life or the biomolecules such as amino acids, sugars, nucleotides, bases, etc. So once they became certain of the origin of life, then it was for the first 2 billion years ago, there were only bacteria on earth. There were many, many kinds of bacteria and some of them were like the chloroplasts of today that you find in cells of living uh, plants and also and some were like the mitochondria. Now those which were like the chloroplasts which could trap solar energy and photosynthesize and therefore we find in the leaves of today the chloroplasts which are now known 
to have been bacteria once upon a time which entered into a combination with other cells. So, once photosynthesis took place, the whole atmosphere got filled with oxygen and once oxygen was there in the atmosphere, there was really no looking back from bacteria the protists came into be. From protists there were other multicellular organisms like the fungi, like the many different kinds of plants, many different animals etcetera. Now therefore, it became well known that all this biodiversity came to be through organic evolution. A picture which shows the different kinds of organisms that find on earth. On the left you can see the fossil ancestors of all insects, scorpions etcetera. Now all this biodiversity is a product of evolution. We have to first understand that. Since then ma'am, I think that around 10 to 15 million living beings are still living on earth. It is well known that on earth probably there have evolved some 10 to 15 million different kinds of species. But scientists have not been able to identify all of them. Some have become extinct, some are still living, but only about 2 million species have been identified, studied and even given scientific names. But ma'am, what is the evidence that supports the existence uh, due to evolution? That is right, that is a good question. Now actually without evidence, no science can be accepted and there has been many different kinds of evidence for evolution. You can see pictures of some limbs. These are limbs of different vertebrates and as you can see, they are for different purposes. Like for example, that of the bat is for flying, that of the mole is for digging the ground, that of the horse is for running fast and that of man is for holding things. But do you notice something? There is a basic similarity in the structure of all these various limbs of the vertebrates. This clearly shows that they must have had common ancestors and that is an evidence for evolution. Now in this slide, you can see some embryos of different kinds of vertebrates. Look at them, see how similar they are. Again that is an evidence for evolution to have taken place. In another slide, you can see the biogeographical evidence. What does this mean? This shows that once upon a time probably the earth had just one landmass called Pangaea and all organisms that evolved were on Pangaea. They were not so many as we see today. Slowly Pangaea broke into two Gondwana and Lauraceae and Lauraceae and Gondwana further broke up and we find the different continents we see today. And if you really see the, uh, try to read and see what kind of animals and plants are found on the different continents, oh well they are very very different. And what about our India? What a rich variety of species that has. Apart from these evidences, there is another evidence which is called the fossil evidence. These are fossil organisms, fossil protozoans, fossil animals, fossil plants and these lived long long time ago and are no longer there. Also now uh, learners, you know that we have done a lot of progress in molecular biology. We now know about the molecules of living organisms. You will be absolutely convinced uh, that there has been evolution and all organisms have come into existence through evolution. See for example, the hereditary material of all organisms is DNA. We have some RNA viruses, but then viruses are not living beings yet. Then DNA is present in chromosomes in all organisms. 
The same four bases are found in DNA of all organisms. But learners, I must tell you that biology is a science of exception and there are exceptions to these. But then you also know that exceptions prove the rule. And you can see that there are the same 22 amino acids which make proteins of living organisms and the same enzymes which are there in all organisms. Aren't you now convinced that all biodiversity has come about through evolution? Okay, so now this biodiversity has come through evolution, but who actually was the founder of this evolution? You can see the picture of a grand old man who was a naturalist from his childhood and he is Charles Darwin, a very, very great scientist of the 19th century. I remember that in 2009, Charles Darwin's 200th birthday was celebrated all over the world. That's right, his bicentenary was celebrated. I think he gave the theory of natural selection. Ma'am, can you please explain what is natural selection? Charles Darwin actually had two major contributions which explained the idea of organic evolution. The first contribution was that all organisms are related through ancestry. And the second contribution was the mechanism of evolution which was natural selection. In fact, many scientists had been trying to find out a mechanism by which evolution had taken place. But Charles Darwin's idea of natural selection is still the only mechanism that is accepted even today. So his theory has really stood the test of time. Now, you can see that evolution really takes place through the interaction of certain forces that act in nature. One of them is variation. Second one is the mechanism that I just told you about. And this mechanism was given by Charles Darwin. It's called natural selection. The third elemental force which is required for evolution to take place is isolation. And then new species are formed and formation of new species really in simple words means evolution of new species. If you see the next slide now, you can see the process of evolution diagrammatically represented. See, evolution actually takes place in a population. In other words, it is the population which evolves. Darwin really thought of this idea so many years ago when nothing about genetics was known. And he thought that evolution was at the level of the individual. But later, many other scientists, they found that it is not the individual which evolves, but it is the population which evolves. So you can see that every population has its own gene pool. What does a gene pool mean? It means all the different kinds of genes that are found in individuals belonging to a population. In the gene pool, variation arises. If you remember, I told you that one of the elemental forces of evolution is variation. And what is this variation? Variation simply means variety, new kinds of genes can be seen. And on this variation, natural selection acts and then natural selection selects those genes which help the possessor to best adapt to its environment. And then natural selection then brings about greater reproduction of those genes which are equipped for better adaptation to the environment. Ma'am, what is variation? Variation, you can see that variation can occur through four processes, two of which are given here. And of course, coming in of new genes in a population takes place through mutation. Mutation is a sudden change in the gene and the gene over generations then absolutely repeats itself with utmost fidelity. 
Now you can see that there are white hogs, their coat color is white, but suddenly due to change in genes, a black hog appears and then all the offspring, all the children of this black hog are black. So what has happened in the gene pool? A new gene for black colored coat has arisen and that keeps on multiplying over generations. Another method is recombination. You just saw the picture of these five little birds whose parents are the same and yet they differ in their tail size, in their beak size. Now in sexually reproducing organisms which most of the organisms are, parents, genes assort and combine differently. That is why learners, if couple has five children, all five children are different. Now apart from mutation and recombination, there are other um, methods of variation, other sources of variation like gene flow and genetic drift. Now once there is some kind of variation by any of these sources in the population, then natural selection comes to act and natural selection will then select the genes which are best for living in that environment. It is a very very good example of natural selection. On your left you can see some moths. Now in the British Isles before the industrial revolution all houses were covered by kinds of plants called lichens. And can you see those white moths with speckled wings? They could easily hide among those lichens not to be seen by the birds which could eat them. Once in a while a black moth would appear because of mutation and the bird would e easily see it and just eat it up so that in the next generation there were no black moths. But slowly what happened due to industrial revolution the whole place got covered with soot and became black. Now if you see the second part of the slide, the lower part, you can see that on that black background, the white moth which was originally there became very conspicuous and birds could easily see them and eat them up. So there was a large number of black moths that can then be seen. Now this is how variation and natural selection interact. You, uh, the variation comes through mutation or recombination, here it is through mutation and natural selection acts through the predator which is the bird. Now apart from variation and natural selection, there is isolation. This slide of course shows that evolution really leads to adaptation. So the best genes are selected by natural selection so organisms can adapt themselves. You can easily see the leaf hopper which is green in color and hides among the leaves not to be seen by the birds which eat it. You can see that little fish which hides in the rocks found in water and so on. So evolution really results in adaptation. Now apart from natural selection and variation, you can see the third elemental force is isolation. And isolation has two roles to play. It helps to make new species. Uh, on the top picture, you can see two kinds of rats. They are from the same population, but now they are far removed from each other and variations will be different and natural selection will choose different variations. So ultimately they can become two different species. Also isolation helps to keep the species distinct from each other. Here in, on the monitor there is a picture of a mule. This the mule as you all know learners has mare as its mother. The horse, the female horse is called the mare in English and it has the female horse mother and the male donkey as father. Now if this were to be able to reproduce it would form a new species but then nature takes care to see that it does not reproduce and genes do not get mixed up. 
If you see the next slide now that there are two different squirrels and these had the same ancestors, how different they have become through variation and natural selection and you can easily see that. Thanks for the information ma'am. So learners, now you must have understood that the first living being evolved from biomolecules. Once there was oxygen on earth, the different kind of living organism evolved through organic evolution. The Charles Darwin was the father of evolution. For evolution to take place, variation, natural selection, isolation, speciation are the forces which are required. This was the first part of the chapter. In the second part of the chapter, we will study about the biodiversity and how to study it. Thanks for joining us, ma'am. Thank you. राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान NIOS आम आदमी के जीवन स्तर को बेहतर बनाता है हमारा लक्ष्य है एक भी व्यक्ति अशिक्षित न रहे शिक्षा के बंद दरवाजों को खोलता स्कूल NIOS यानी राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान जिसने 25 लाख से अधिक लोगों को बेहतर शिक्षा से जोड़ा है इसी तर्ज पर शिक्षा के नजरिए को एक नया स्वरूप प्रदान करता है मुक्त विद्यावाणी जिसकी शुरुआत 19 जुलाई 2012 को मानव संसाधन एवं विकास मंत्रालय द्वारा की गई ऑन द डे ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर इनिशिएटिव व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड टेकिंग अप विद द सपोर्ट ऑफ वेरियस एक्सपर्टाइज बॉडी वी ऑल्सो डिड नॉट नो दैट हाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर सिस्टम विल वर्क for reaching to the unreached and more specifically to the learners who are unable to attend the face to face contact program. In fact, our motto has been using the technology and more particularly the media and facilitating the learning of the children and Mukt Vidyavani is one such venture in this context. The PCP program more popularly known as personal contact program is uh, one such venture and also addressing the issues related to the learners both academic and non-academic and I must congratulate each of the department more specifically the academic and vocational education department which has been supportive in organizing such personal contact programs using Mukt Vidyavani. दो साल का सफर और लाखों लोगों के चेहरे पर खिलती मुस्कान जीवन जीने की प्रेरणा देती मुस्कान और इन चेहरों पर यह मुस्कान आई है मुक्त विद्यावाणी के जरिए मुक्त विद्यावाणी भारत का पहला एजुकेशन वेब रेडियो जिसने न केवल राष्ट्रीय बल्कि अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर पर भी अपनी उपस्थिति दर्ज कराई है Mukt Vidyavani as a technology has been found quite useful. In fact, I have been personally monitoring and found that not only within India, even it has been accessed by the people, those who are abroad as well. And this particular venture has been well appreciated across the globe and within India itself. I am sure that uh, this will in the years ahead prove to be a more innovative intervention using media for reaching to the unreached. केवल किताबों के माध्यम से शिक्षा देने के बजाय हम आपको दृश्य और शब्द के माध्यम से भी शिक्षा देने का प्रयास करते रहे हैं। दो साल पूर्व एक ऐसी शुरुआत की थी मुक्त विद्यावानी से 
यह कार्यक्रम आप कंप्यूटर के जरिए सुन सकते हैं आने वाले समय में आपसे और सहयोग और उत्साह की अपेक्षा के साथ आपको फिर से बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं द मुख विद्यावानी इन पर्टिकुलरली इन माई डिपार्टमेंट दैट इज एवेल्युएशन डिपार्टमेंट वी यूज डूरिंग द एग्जामिनेशन बिफोर द एग्जामिनेशन आफ्टर द एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल एज फॉर द एडवोकेसी प्रोग्राम फॉर द ऑन डिमांड एग्जामिनेशन I appreciate the efforts taken by all the departments, including academic, students' uh, support service, and the administrative department and media unit, for uh, encouraging this uh, Mukt Vidya Vani. Our Mukt Vidya Vani program is doing for two years, and the success of two years tells us that with the use of technology and media, education. जो ओपन लर्निंग ओपन एंड डिस्टेंस लर्निंग में जो एजुकेशन दी जाती है उसको कितना अच्छी तरह किया जा सकता है मैं सभी संबंधित को शुभकामनाएं देता हूं मुक्त विद्या वाणी के दो साल पूर्ण होने पर इस अवसर पर मैं नायस के लर्नर्स को विशेष रूप से शुभकामनाएं देना चाहूँगा साथ ही मैं शुभकामनाएं देना चाहूँगा अपनी मीडिया यूनिट के सभी अधिकारियों कर्मचारियों को जिनके इस अथक परिक्रम से हमारे जो छात्र हैं जो लर्नर्स हैं उनको फ़ायदा पहुंचाए। मैं आशा करता हूं आगे आने वाला समय हमारे लिए और चैलेंजिंग होगा और इस कार्यक्रम के माध्यम से हम अपने लर्नर्स को अधिक से अधिक लाभ पहुंचा पाएंगे मुक्त विद्या वाणी के दूसरे स्थापना दिवस पर मैं पूरी मीडिया टीम को अनेकों नेक शुभकामनाएं देता हूं। मैं आशा करता हूँ कि आगे आने वाले दिनों में मुक्त विद्या वाणी का एक्सपेंसन होगा और इसे टैब और मोबाइल के माध्यम से भी स्टूडेंट तक पहुंचाया जा सके मुक्त विद्यावाणी के कार्यक्रमों को विद्यार्थियों तक पहुंचाने के लिए कई प्रक्रियाओं से गुजरना पड़ता है सबसे पहले हमारे ऑडियो स्टूडियो में विषय विशेषज्ञ शैक्षिक अधिकारी एंकर कार्यक्रम निर्वाहक और तकनीकी कौशल की सहायता से एक कार्यक्रम को तैयार करके उसे प्रसारित किया जाता है जिसमें माध्यमिक उच्चतर माध्यमिक और व्यवसायिक पाठ्यक्रमों के कार्यक्रम शामिल हैं कार्यक्रम के बनने के बाद उसे अपलोड किया जाता है मुक्त विद्यावाणी की वेबसाइट पर और फिर उसे जोड़ा जाता है सर्वर से अब ये कार्यक्रम तैयार है आप तक पहुंचने के लिए और वो भी बिना किसी रुकावट के मुक्त विद्यावाणी बहुत ही मेरे लाइफ में बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंस है क्योंकि जो भी लेसन मुझे समझ में नहीं आता था तो मैं उसमें सुनता था और उसमें जो भी बताता तो मुझे उससे बहुत हेल्प मिली है हम नंबर्स पे कॉल करके तभी अपने सारे डाउट्स को क्लियर आउट कर सकते हैं जो भी हमारे डाउट्स हैं वो क्लियर हो जाते हैं उस पर मैं चाहूँगा एन एन ओ से कि मैम जिस तरीके से अभी इन्होंने प्रोग्रेस की है जिस तरीके से बच्चों के हेल्प के लिए बहुत सारी टेक्निकें लाई है ये और भी ऐसी चलती रहे और भी थोड़ी लाए मुक्त विद्यावाणी के कार्यक्रमों को सुनने के लिए बस आपको जरूरत है एक कंप्यूटर और इंटरनेट की सुविधा की मुक्त विद्यावाणी के कार्यक्रमों को लाइव सुनने और कार्यक्रमों के बारे में संपूर्ण जानकारी के लिए लॉग ऑन करें www.nios.ac.in पर और क्लिक करें मुक्त विद्यावाणी के पेज पर यहाँ पर आप हमारे लाइव पर्सनल कॉन्टैक्ट प्रोग्राम्स को सुन सकते हैं सोमवार से शुक्रवार दोपहर दो, दो बजे से शाम पांच बजे तक शनिवार और रविवार सुबह साढ़े दस बजे से दोपहर साढ़े बारह बजे तक लाइव पर्सनल कॉन्टैक्ट प्रोग्राम्स के दौरान आप हमारे विषय विशेषज्ञ और शैक्षिक अधिकारी से सीधे जुड़ सकते हैं और आप हमें हमारे नंबर शून्य एक दो शून्य चार छह दो छह नौ चार नौ और टोल फ्री नंबर एक आठ शून्य शून्य एक आठ शून्य दो पांच चार तीन पर फोन करके अपने विषय से संबंधित सभी समस्याओं का समाधान पा सकते हैं आप हमें ईमेल भी कर सकते हैं हमारा ईमेल आईडी है मुक्त विद्यावाणी एम यू के टी ए वी आई डी वाई ए वी ए एन आई एट एन आई ओ एस डॉट ए सी डॉट इन श्रोताओं अगर आप किसी भी कारणवश हमारे लाइव प्रोग्राम्स को सुन नहीं पाते हैं तो इसका पुनः प्रसारण भी हमारी वेबसाइट पर संपूर्ण जानकारी के साथ उपलब्ध है मुक्त विद्यावाणी लाखों छात्रों के लिए इसी पथ पर अग्रसर है
मुक्त विद्यावाणी का सदा यही प्रयास एन के द्वारा सरल शिक्षा अब पहुंचे हर किसी के पास मुक्त विद्यावाणी द्वारा शिक्षा कहीं भी कभी भी